Hey folks, Doc here. Don't let the sweater and ball cap fool you. It's pretty damn cool out here. Uh, I haven't even looked at the temperature recently. Um, I know that it's kind of sort of along the general lines of if I were to stand out here in a sweater and a ball cap for anything more than a few minutes, I would seriously regret it. Uh, anyways, I think it's uh, time I bring you up to speed on the Suburban Commando project. I've gotten a little bit of progress done in the last week or so. So, I uh, figure I'll show you what I got done. Let's have a look, shall we? So yeah, I figured I'd drive her into the shop and show you the front end coming in because the front end is where all the action's been happening. Let's have a look. Okay, so as you can see, I got the front bumper unit on that came off M2. Um, you can probably basically ignore the green. That started off with me wanting to throw some spray paint on the welds just to protect them real quick. And I've been playing with color. As you can see, the lighting is kind of a little iffy in here. That doesn't really show the Chevy engine orange that it is. Uh, it's a lot redder in person. Like we're talking General Lee sort of orange. Anywho, um, just coming in a little bit closer here, you can see the original framing for this bumper. Uh, as you recall, was, uh, was it one and a half by four C channel, some heavy duty stuff. And uh, I had some of it left over, so I was able to use the same material to extend the bumper back far enough to the frame on this thing um, to make this happen the way I want it to happen with, you know, sufficient space between the winch and the grill and have room to open the hood and blah, 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 blah. Um, and as you can see, I added this tow hook here. Uh, picked that up at Princess Auto on sale for, I think, $4, so it looked like something that was worth doing. <clears throat> And yeah, turning our attention back to that Chevy engine orange, I'm playing with color on this thing. And uh, I think that orange is going to stay. Still not 100% sure on the rest of it. I'll take it out into the daylight or what's left of it, because the sun's going to be going down shortly. And, you know, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. But as you can see, I got the winch back on, and that's operational again. And uh, yeah, as you saw coming in, we got that wicked bad light bar. Here's the packaging from that light bar. It's uh, put out by Blazer. And there you have it, folks. It's a 12 inch LED Baja Tough light bar. And uh, here's a look at the back of the package. This thing cost me pretty dearly. Uh, it says that it's waterproof and it features 24 LEDs. Um, neat thing about that, actually, is I'll point it out a little bit closer afterwards. Uh, but the outer four on each side are in a flood pattern and then the inner ones are in a spot pattern so this thing's got a heck of a lot of coverage I haven't actually tried it outside in the dark yet I'm going to do that tonight and maybe I'll film a little segment um, this thing did cost me fairly dearly uh, it's $80 in loose change at Bass Pro and of course you turn that into Canadian and it cost me my left testicular but I figured what the hell you know carpe diem you only live once I'm gonna have a little fun here so we're gonna check this out um, one thing that I will say about it is it appears to be really well built um, it's all aluminum including the mounting brackets it's a heavy son of a gun it weighs several pounds as opposed to you know some lightweight piece of crap uh, I'm pretty happy with the hardware I am not happy with the fact that for the amount of money I spent uh, it didn't come with any wiring except for the pigtail that comes out of it, which is, you know, 12 or 14 inches long. No relays, no switches, no fuses, no bueno. For this kind of money, people, are you kidding? Uh, but again, the light itself looks to be really decent. These things are so bright that it just completely washes out the camera when I try and take a picture. It's supposed to be 5,000 lumens. And uh, trying to remember... 
how many watts it was. I think it was 72 watts. So we've got 24 LEDs at 3 watts a crack. So yeah, 72 watts and it boasts 5,000 lumens. So I kind of went through hell and back mounting this thing and figuring out exactly where I wanted it. See, there's still some residual smoke in the shop from last time I opened the wood stove door. Awesome. Anyways, that's where I decided that I wanted it. Uh, so I had to take the mesh out of there. Uh, the problem is, is when I first kind of positioned it in place, I realized I was going to have fitment issues with the alternator, which is not there yet, but I want it to be there. But I kind of figured out a workaround for that. Anyways, I had the option of setting it, you know, behind the bars here, bracketed to the bars and, you know, the outer two LEDs on each side were blocked by that and I didn't want it forward of the bars because obviously I want it protected. Uh, so I took out the headlights in the upper grill area here and I set it in there temporarily and sure enough it would have worked but I didn't like the look and to one degree or another I suppose looks matter. So anyways, just zooming in a little bit closer here, uh, you can see that I had to get the Dremel out with a little cutoff wheel and just do a little bit of clearancing in the fiberglass there just to make a little bit more room for the bracket and, you know, because the hood hinge is there, I could only go so far. Um, so that's about as far forward as I could get it. Um, it is a little bit recessed, but it's not too horrible. Let's uh, get the hood open and have a look at the inside of her. Okay, so that's the industrial view of this thing. I've got it temporarily wired up to the main headlight circuit. You can see I literally just screwed it to the headlight terminals just to test it. I'll probably put it on a separate switch later, but there's the unit itself. Uh, the whole thing is an aluminum extrusion, uh, <clears throat> kind of like with these big honking heat sinks on it. And uh, there's the mounting brackets. Again, they're aluminum as well, which is nice. And uh, I just basically bolted it right to the lower cowl section there. And as you can see, I had to do a little bit of clearancing here and along the bottom edge of the hood. I'll just tuck you in there for a second. You can see where I had to cut it off a little bit and a little bit of notch on the hinges just so that I could get it as far forward as possible and still have the hood operate properly. So I figure I've left myself enough room up here to mount that Delco 12SI alternator. I'm mostly in shadow back here now, so you still can't get the full value of the color, but you get the idea. I think generally it's pretty similar. In fact, I don't know if there's any truth to it, but uh, I heard that the General Lee was actually painted Chevy engine orange. At any rate, there she is. And I'm liking the looks of it. I'm liking the looks of it with the light bar in it. So, yep, there's still a few things to do to Commando here. I've got to get the alternator in. I'm going to do a little bit more electrical work. Uh, do the battery boost system, onboard compressor, an ammo can or two. You know, my usual suspects. Yeah, it's pretty cold out here. I'm going to go inside. Yeah, I think I'm going to hang out in here for a while by the wood stove. Anyways, that's your update on the Commando project. Um, up next, I think I'm going to drag Mule in here. Because Mule's got some changes coming. Mule's got some big changes coming. Anyways, once again, thank you for tuning in Sprockets Garage on YouTube and watching and subscribing and sharing and all that stuff. And uh, don't forget to check out the Sprockets Garage Facebook page and uh, visit sulfurcitydesign.com to feed your adhesive addiction. Until next time, take care of yourself. Well, what the heck, she's a little darker outside. I'm going to try and kill the ambient light. Ooh so dark I can't see where I'm going. Awesome. I'll go outside and have a look at those lights. There is a bit of a moon. The neighbors have their lights on so it's not completely pitch black out here. Well it probably looks it from where you're sitting. But we're just gonna go ahead and hit those lights anyways. 
Yeah, see, there is there is a moon. There's a little bit of light. <clears throat> and now there's a lot of light. That's blinding even on a 45 degree angle. Anyways, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but the factory lights were pathetic in comparison. They were looking rather yellow. So just for kicks and giggles, I fogged some green spray paint over them. So at least they glow green. Can't really tell, can you? Wow. Blinding. Anyways, I think that'll do nicely. Cheers. Mm -hmm.